afternoon, everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming, where you get to play board games with us. We're coming to you live here from PAX Unplugged 2018, bringing you all the board game coverage all weekend long. But first up, who are we? As usual, I'm your host, Matt. Uh, I'm Ann. I'm Walter. Yeah, we're joined here with Walter from Greenbrier Games. Walter. What's up? What's up? It's always a pleasure having you oh on. Oh my god, you guys are my favorites. You guys are the lights in the dark. Aww. It's so great to be here. I mean, wow. you're a very bright light in the dark <laughs> today, but normally you're a regular light. So, Walter, uh, first and foremost, how has the convention been for you so far? This has honestly been the most fun convention I think I've been to, at least in, at least in some time. That's awesome. Um, I've gotten to do more playing games than ever and most cons. I spend a lot of time running around doing the booth stuff, doing the meetings. So, yeah, this this kind of got to be like be a fan for the first time in a while. And like, you, you were stuck in the cool. Twist Gaming Purple Room for quite some time. Stuck. This, this stuck. <laughs> miserably stuck, but that's okay. Um, yeah, and I've got to kind of remember that I love board games, and it's not just work. That I'm like actually like other people's stuff too, and so it's yeah, been yeah, really yeah. great. Yeah, I love to hear that. Has there been a, has there been a game that's stuck out to you this convention that you got to see new? 100. percent There's this game, Title Blades, on Kickstarter. Oh yeah. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have seen it from there, but I got to actually look at the prototype and talk to the designers and the publisher and people. To, and I was just the amount of love that they put into that game sort of like rekindled some fire for me. And I was feeling a little uninspired this year. It sort of like reminded me that I like want to be here and I want to do the stuff so feel it's really wonderful yeah That's and really Walter cool. we, we want to thank you again for taking the time to uh, do some personal demos for us these last couple nights as well thank you for giving us a space for showing off horror and people has been it's been an amazing reception here so I, the twist gaming area has been fantastic it, it's popping yeah today. it's I been love really it. great so uh, you brought something else to show off today. So we've got Grimslingers. Yeah, we realize you guys actually haven't ever. Not have you got a chance to take a look at Grimslingers, nope. which is my one of my favorite games that we do here at Greenbrier, and we've been doing it for a couple of years now. So I'm surprised that we haven't gotten a chance to play before. But what kind of game is Grimslingers? So Grimslingers, thematically speaking, is a dark fantasy sci-fi western game. Yes. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> a lot packed into that. Um, so we are in this mysterious land called the Forgotten West, where we all okay. sort of have amnesia. We don't really know how we got here, why we're here, whatever. Instead of three of us, we are at the uh, Valley Haven Bar, which is the location that you go to in the game, having a couple drinks. When things go awry, we end up getting in a bar fight, and we get our, oh, we'll actually, we'll show the little map that will play in the story mode oh, here. Okay. We'll zoom in on this for a sec. Um, so we're having a couple drinks when we get in a bar fight, and we get our butts kicked. We get left bloodied and broken and tossed in the sands of the Forgotten West. We are left for dead. Never getting into a bar fight with you again. Yeah, seriously. With that chair, I mean, who's going to fight him? <laughs> um, <laughs> And this guy, I don't know if we can see on camera here, this yeah. guy, Icarus the Iron Witch, he drags us, he le we were left for dead in the sands, he drags us back to his workshop, brings us to his laboratory, and he brings us back to life. We're basically his little Frankenstein monsters. He's pumped us full of metal and magic to restore us. We're left with these amazing powers. I we're his it. grim slingers, but we're also his little errand boys. We have to do whatever he says. I mean, a small price to pay a for A small price to pay for some really, really awesome yeah. powers and not being dead, right? Yeah. So the game is in two parts. The first part is training, where we're going to play a versus mode, where we're going to just learn how to use our powers. Okay. okay. There are a lot of layers to that that we're going to introduce slowly. So we're going to play the first round with the most basic piece of it, and then we're going to introduce some new layers as we go, all in an effort to learn how to be Grimslingers so we can then do the awesome story campaign stuff where we're going to be cooperatively fighting monsters and things like that as a group. Okay. But we'll start with just the basic version here. Uh, each of us is going to pick one of these characters to be... Our little Grim Slingers. So I here, there's a ton of different characters, oh, but let's, uh, let's, so let's see a couple of them through. here. So we got, uh, are there names on these, or are these That's just... That's Pocket Watch Will. Uh, their names are on the back. Oh, okay. That Le is... Le Fleur Noir. Le Fleur. And the Professor. The Professor is the bear, actually. <gasps> That's amazing. Um, I forget some of these guys' names. Let's jump to some highlights. This was oh, one of my yeah. favorites. This is the burglar cat, Nino. Nino. Uh, Nino actually was a human at one point. He's a ghost. You actually can't really see on the green screen, but there's a ghost in the back there. And uh, then, so it's uh, Nino and their partner in crime are actually trapped in that crystal. I feel like Anne's going to pick this I one I hope here. so. Cute Kipper's my personal favorite. <gasps> uh, so it's kind of a little, little dark side of the story that it's not just humans that the Iron Witch experiments on, that he's turned many animals into Grim Slingers and bestowed them with incredible amounts of intelligence as well. So this is a talking little dog uh, that fights with that sword, believe it or not. Puts it in right in his mouth. I, I already know. All right, that's for Ann. Yeah. <laughs> I'm um, going to take you down at the knees. I'm, no, I'm, I'm definitely Professor Bear right now. Okay, there. awesome. That's, that's me. All right, All give me that cat. It's the only oh, way to ride. Nuno? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Okay, so we're each going to start, for this very basic version, we're each going to start at eight health. Our little character is going to track our health on this little health tracker. Okay. Uh, ten oh, would be the most here. we can hold, but we're going to start at eight. So I want the eight showing? Yeah, the eight showing. No exactly. pain, no gain, as they say. Yeah, there's some little flavor text on here that's sort of uh, humiliating. So, as you lose life, the game sort of mocks you. 
<laughs> Yeehaw, take your best shot. Right now, scroll that up a little bit and see what happens as you lose some health. Keep it up, I can do this all day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, take uh, enjoying the unkindness stranger. And they're all a little different, and they're double-sided. <laughs> so one of the things I love about Grimslinger is it's just packed with flavor. There's tons of it in the game. So we're not just our, ourselves a Grimslinger, but Grimslingers are paired with a little robot companion called an anima. So each of us has a little anima buddy if you want to show yours here. And these were like psionically linked with these little guys. And they're going to hold, they're basically like our little libraries. They hold all our spells. They're going to hold some of our equipment and things like that. They're our little buddies that are going to help us in combat. Fantastic. So we're going to have those on our little energy tracker. And we're also going to start with eight energy. So we have the eight showing there. And I love the text in the energy tracker. You'll never be able to read it here. No. But it's the anima talking to you. And they say adorable and very weird little things to you. Uh, uh, so like, difficulties, please stand by. <laughs> uh, incompetent, must destroy. Query, biscuits. Yeah. Yeah, there's some really good ones. All right. Um, and as the story goes, we learn more about some of the personalities of these different characters in these animas. So in the basic version of the uh, versus game that we're going to play, we all have the exact same set of cards, the exact same tools. We have six okay. elements that are identical for each of us. Lightning, okay. fire, wind, water, up. ice, and earth. Exactly. And these kind of have a cyclical relation to them, uh, relationship between them, like a giant game of rock, paper, scissors. And this is just, again, the very basic systems in the game here. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we were to play our cards, and let's say... I were to attack Matt with a uh, fire. Okay. And Matt were to attack me with wind. All right. We're going to play them face down at the same time. We yeah. don't know who's playing what. Okay. When we're ready, we're like, one, two, three, draw. We flip the cards up. We see who played what in a multiplayer game. And we'll so also add a targeting card. So I could say, um, yeah, exactly. So in this case, it says, wind beats fire. My fire would go away. You guys now know I don't have fire left for another round of this fight, okay. and the effect of wind will hit me. I'll take some damage. In this case, I lose some cards. Some different things happen. Okay. okay. Then we would keep going, trying to get each other down to zero. We're trying to be in this three-way duel here. We're trying to be the last person standing in this little fight. Sounds good. So we're going to play a couple rounds of just the elements, and then we're going to add in some more layers. There are okay. signature spells, items, character classes. There's a lot to this game, but we'll start with just these. Okay. You guys each are given a uh, player color. This is just for the multiplayer duel here. Where, Matt, you're going to be the red player, okay. and you're the blue player, yeah. I'm the green player. Kay. On the back of these cards are colors for the other players. Oh, well. he, cho he chose the green one. <laughs> uh -huh. Targeting Walter. Da -da -da. There you go. Uh, then there's blue. There you player. go. So when I play a spell, okay. if I want to target Anne, who is yeah. the blue player, yeah. I'm going to say, let's say I want to hit Anne with lightning. So I'm like, man, I really hate Anne. <laughs> I'm going to play lightning and face down and playing my secret targeting card. Okay. You guys okay. will all play them at the same time. Okay. And we'll be like, one, two, three, flip, and we'll reveal who targeted who. Okay. okay. That whole rock, paper, scissors wheel only matters if we target each other. Okay. So if you target Matt, Matt targets me, and I target you, all the spells will just resolve, and then we'll keep going. Because you're not defending against with anything. Exactly. Now, if two people target each other and they don't have things that directly relate to each they other, they just the wheel. both hit. Okay. So it's gotcha. really fast paced here. Okay. But we'll be remembering, we'll see what cards you've played. You have one card in your discard face up. So I have to remember, okay, I think Matt's played ice and wind, meaning I can probably safely play water or earth or things like that. You but you're going to get so your target card back each time. Your target card will come back each time. Okay. Exactly. Now, hold on. I've got wind twice here. Oh, did I screw up? You should have six. Two, what are you three, missing? four, five, six. Okay, Okay, cool. awesome. Uh, that's because I gave you my wind. There we go. All, All right. right. So let's take one around here. Give it a shot. And, okay, I think I'm ready. So is there like a, a thing we have to do to count down? Is it one, two, three, draw? It's one, two, three, draw. Okay. One, two, three, three draw. draw. Okay, so first we're going to check who's targeting who. You All guys right. are both targeting me, naturally, of and course. I'm targeting Matt. I mean, naturally. how can I not? Naturally. How can I not? Right, so first we're going to go around. There's actually a little first player marker. It's a little first player meeple here. So okay. we're going to go for me, and we're going to say, I'm targeting Matt with ice. You're targeting me with earth. Mm -hmm. Earth and ice have no relationship. So my ice is going to hit you. In this case, you're going to take two damage. Okay. You so go I'm to six go health. Boop, boop, six health. And you also deduct two EP, which is the energy that your little robots oh no, uh, carry. And I'll talk bug. to you about how the robot works next round here. Gotcha. Continuing around the circle here, Matt, you get me. I go down to six. You pop back up two health. Okay. So I go up to eight. Exactly. And then, and you also hit me. Wind does a little less damage. I'm going to take one. I'm going to go to five. Okay. But I have to deactivate three cards, meaning I'm going to have to lose three cards face down. You guys won't know which ones I pick. And Four. I have to spend energy to get these back oh, okay. on my turn. So let's do a new round here. Okay. Our cards are gone. They're in the discard. We see who, what people played. Target cards are back. Target card. Uh, this one goes in discard. Okay. So at the beginning of a round, we skipped this for the first time. At the beginning of the round, everyone gets one standoff action where our guns are still holstered. We haven't used our spells yet. A standoff action 
can be a number of different things. As we add in more layers, we'll get more options. In this first layer, we really only have one thing we can do with our standoff action, which is activate our little robot buddy. There's three things a little robot buddy can do for you. Okay. You can spend uh, purge. You can discard some cards to get energy back okay. if, you didn't, if you didn't have enough. Okay. You can reload, which is spending three of your energy. So we start with eight. You can spend three to get some cards back mm -hmm. from your little discard here. And then you can, if you want to, surge, which is discard some cards to make your oh. next spell more powerful. And so if you flip the, your guy over on the back, he's got a completely different all kind crazy of... crazy surge mode. Okay. Oh, look at that. Mine's got an unhappy So face, we all get probably. one standoff action. So we get a standoff action right now. Right now. We're going okay. around a circle. Now you're the first player. Okay. So I'm going to... So remind me again. Surging makes my next attack more we'll powerful. We'll make whatever spell you play this round. Mm -hmm. Any number printed on that card. It's one of the concepts in Grimslingers is they are number values, which is on a card like uh, Fire. Let's show Fire real quick. Sure thing. Fire has some text, and in that text at the bottom there, that's the effect banner. It's got two numbers. It does two damage, and then you discard one card. Those are printed numerical values. Anything that gives you plus one, it's called NV, the number values, will increase all the actual printed numbers on that card by one. So that would do three damage, and I'd deactivate, excuse me, discard two cards. Okay. Does that make sense? Awesome. So I'll take fire back, because it's coming at your face. Just kidding. You yeah. don't know. All right. So we're picking more cards. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and surge. You're though. surging? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're I don't have enough stuff to spells? surge. Right? So I would have to reload to get to be able to surge. I'm not going gonna, gonna to skip my standoff. Oh, He's but, surging. I'm sorry. Surge, you have to... Uh, deactivate three spells. Deactivate, deactivate three, three spells. spells. Okay. So, so those just go into my discard pile? There's actually a tricky thing in Grimslingers where there's two types of discard piles. Okay. There's a deactivate pile and a discard pile. Cards that you play, like my little spell here, Ice, that I played, went to a discard pile, and that's face up. Deactivate pile is face down, and they actually cost different amounts of energy at different intervals to get those back. So you have to choose. You have cards in different places, spells in different uh, that have been used versus spells that are actually being like held by my little anima over here. Um, okay. I'm gonna have to make some difficult choices on when I want to get which spells back. So for you here, it's actually they're deactivated versus your earth has been discarded. Right. That's okay. a great way of doing it. That's perfect. Coming for you, Anne. Yeah, what you're what looking what a little what salty what over there. What what One, two, three, draw. Okay. Ew, you really are calm so over here. So Matt oh and I targeted Anne both fire. with fire. <laughs> That's messed up. <laughs> and Anne targeted Matt with Earth here. So fire and Earth have no relationship. There's no, no one clashing and just beating them out right here. So we're going to go for Matt. Matt hits Anne. How much? Two. Uh, but I did surge. He surged. So he's actually hitting you for three. And you have to discard one of the cards from your hand. At random or by choice? Of your choice. Well, I don't know too much about any of them. Actually, no. no, no. With, uh, with fire, it's random. With fire, okay. it's random. Yeah. With wind, it's your choice. So this card is going to go to the same pile as, as the, spell the spell that you I played. just and previously played. And those actually played. stay face up. Okay. Yeah. Well, now you And know. we only have to see the top one, so you don't have to, we have to remember what's underneath it okay. for our little mind game here. All right. Um, we're coming back around, and you target Matt for two. Okay. So Matt, you're back one, down to two. six, and you're back up to seven with your earth spell. But then I also hit you in. Thanks. Because we really just don't like you. Walter. Yeah, it's just the thing. It's what we're about. And you <laughs> also have to discard another card. So you're really running out of options Thanks. right now. Yeah, you're right. But we're going to add another layer to the game for this round here, which is that the elements are all very simple. We'll take these back. They go to a discard. We get our targeting card. Back. The elements, once you get into them, they do very simple things. I'm going right. to give you guys each two signature spells. Okay. In the story mode, you would have to earn these by leveling up. Okay. In the verses, when we're just learning them, there's a couple ways you can get them. You can draft them, you can give them at random, whatever. I'm going to give you each two signature spells at random. And then we're going to look at the anatomy of one signature spell. Let's look at, let's look at this guy here, Pierce. This is a really good example. All right. Minus the green screen. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so just like an element spell, you'll put them down on your turn, face down, with a target. You're targeting somebody. They've got that name at the top, a little bit of graphic, and then that effect banner. Just like the element, we'll explain what they do. There's a few key differences. Signature spells are A, all different. We'll now have different spells. They're all unique. No one has identical signature spells. Okay. There is a little number in blue at the bottom. That's how much energy it costs to play that spell. So your anima is going to have to deduct two energy in order to use that pierce when you play it. So you put it down, face down, nothing happens. It's when you flip it up that you're like, ah, I have to deduct energy to gotcha. use it. They also have a different speed. 
So that one has a speed of four. Okay. All of the elements that we've been playing, why we've been going around in the circle, is because all our elements have a speed of nine. They have identical speeds. So they resolve kind of at the same time. That's why we go from the first player in a round. Whereas with the signature spells, we'll resolve from the lowest number first. So if I played Pierce, even though, let's say, Anne was first player, Pierce will happen before an element because it's a faster spell. So we'll okay. do that, and then we'll go back around and do the uh, cards and their numerical values going up in terms of speed. Fantastic. Okay. So we'll take that one back. There you go. So let's do a new round hmm. with our new spells. Sure, let's do that. We'll just be waiting for you over here forever. Okay, so now that we have different spells in the mix, the first thing we're going to do is check the speeds. I've got a six. I have an eight. You've got an eight. Two. And no. Magnify's got a ten. Ten. A ten oh, speed. wait, I missed it So it's it going to go the slowest. Two oh, is the cost. All right. That's okay. All right. Uh, Immolate is going to go first because it's got the lowest speed here. It's going to mm -hmm. cost me one to use. I'll go to seven here. And even though I targeted Anne technically with the spell, this one says roll and do that much in damage to all foes. And I'm going to take that much damage as well, but minus two. So I'm going to roll this little die. He pulled these at random. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, not very much. I could have rolled a six. We could have all freaking died. That would have hurt. Roll a two here. So you guys are each going to take two damage. Okay. One, two. And I'm taking zero because it's okay. the number minus two. So in this case, that actually worked out pretty well for me. My signature spell goes to discard. This comes back. Okay. Resolving in terms of speed here. Matt hit me with uh, mana a mana burn. So I'm down from seven to four. So I'm running. I'm going to quickly run out of options so here. So how do we regain EP? There's one way to regain EP. Actually, there's a couple ways to regain EP. Okay. Excuse me. Uh, the anima has a little purge ability. So instead of surging like you did, and actually it's surging is for one round, so you're back, right, to right, back to normal. Instead of surging like you did for your standoff, you could have chose to purge and ditch cards to get EP back. That's not super efficient, however, because you really want your cards. Right. So there's a couple other reliable ways to do it, like our water spell. One of our special abilities is water. Water will regain you uh, mana back. It'll do some damage and gain you back some of your uh, EP. Perfect. Oh. But I'm now... Smacked around. I got less EP. I have fewer options. This is going to go back to you. This now, I played this one mostly because the text is so crazy, and I'm trying to see what it does. I love this card. It's one of my favorites. You're going to uh, spend two energy to use it. Okay. So it takes me from eight to six. And it says, replace this card with a spell from your hand. You have to spend any energy. It was saying pay EP cost for that. So if I played another crazy signature spell, I'd have to pay for that one too. It's not giving me a free card. Okay. But you could play an element now, which is free, if you because they don't okay. have any cost. You could play, like, fire or something. And the values on that card, all the number values are increased by one. Oh, I like this very much. And what's really fun about this, too, is if you guys were targeting each other yeah. and you targeted her with an element, then she could, she could choose the, the countering yeah. element. Exactly. That's exactly. Funny. So then I get to play an additional card. Right. I'm going to play the water. So you play water, and it's a souped-up water. So it's three damage for Matt. Yep. And I regain three EP. Three EP, exactly. So it takes me from six to nine. Right, so Matt, so you're at one. I'm at one health. That's, okay. Uh, that's okay. not that great. We're going to introduce... Another layer to this game, just so that we can uh, learn Matt. the pieces for the co-op mode here. Mm -hmm. And murder Matt, yes, of course. Thank you. Okay. Which is that there is a scavenge deck of items. Okay. Just uh, similar to the signature spells, we'll get these throughout the co-op mode. You'll find them as loot and things like that. But in the versus mode, there's going to be a little scavenge field. Three items that are face up. Uh, That's that a leg. For a standoff action, just like you use your robot, you could instead pull one of these items. Okay. It costs one energy to go run over and pick up an item. But then you have it for that turn. Uh, some of the items, there are a bunch of different kinds. Some of them are going to be standoff items where you use them instead of doing one of those things, like gain a little health back, drink a potion, what have you. Okay. Some of them are going to be things you use instead of spells, like this, uh, Anne pointed out, this prosthetic pistol. <laughs> one of my favorite cards in the game. The leg gun. The prosthetic pistol has a speed of four on the card. So instead of playing an uh, element spell or something, I can play this pistol face down with my target spell, flip it up, and I'm like, I was attacking Matt with this prosthetic leg. And I have two choices when I play this card in particular. It says I can either club you with it or I can shoot you with the gun that's, that's uh, hidden in the leg there. So it's uh, going to be a modal kind of card. Right? I have two options. I can either do a fast attack for less damage or a slow attack for more damage. Oh, uh, okay. There's also, here we have one of our favorites of mine. The Wooly Ward. The Wooly Ward. <laughs> oh, you are immune to all damage this phase, you monster. Unconventional, guy, but uh, you're desperate. I love it. 
And uh, we have someone, some viewer going in and asking, uh, what's the typical play time on this game? So the versus mode, we're doing a lot of explaining. We're going through all the layers. The versus mode is probably 15 minutes. The cooperative campaign, which we're going to get to in a second, at least touch on a little bit. Yeah. That's a 90 minute per chapter. That's oh, definitely nice. a, that's a full it's kind of RPG meteor, type yeah, experience. Yeah. And there are four chapters in this core game. And then so, for our viewers watching, this is uh, Grim Slingers. This by is Grim Slingers. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Um, so let's give this round a shot here where we now have an option to pick up items if we want. Mm -hmm. Starting with, because we're going around here, starting with first player, I'm going to choose to pick up for one EP, I now only have three left, this bottle of absinthe. Oh, what is it? It's the not going to show absinthe? very well on the screen here. The invisible bottle of bottle absinthe, of absinthe. absinthe can be one of two things. It could be something I drink, a standoff action to get some of my EP back, or I can combine it with a spell. In this case, I can combine uh -huh. it with fire. I breathe my absinthe and my fire together, and it's going to do a little extra damage. I'll take that once in my hand. It's very uh, showy. Doing very it that way, very yeah. showy. Uh, and now you have a standoff action. You I could use your robot. You could gain an item. All right. So the only way to gain health would be to with an item, but I don't. Or your see Earth one. card. Or my Earth card, which, which you already, which played. already played. So Earth is here in your discard. Yeah. So you can spend three EP to get cards back from your discard. When you're taking cards back from your discard pile, is it at random or are you no, selecting? You you're selecting. So you know what? I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna spend one EP and I'm gonna get myself the Wooly Ward. Okay, you deserve it. Yeah. I think it makes me look fabulous. So and one thing I forgot actually I screwed up here is that this uh, auto this, this auto refreshes. So and you'll have extra options. Here example is a card that you combine with wind, so you would play it and wind face down together, do extra damage. This is one that you combine with any element spell. This awesome gun that you channel your powers through, it makes it slower but more powerful. That's a choice that you're gonna gotcha. have to make if you want to. All right. So I think we got time for one more round here, and then we can start touching on the campaign. Okay. Awesome. Okay. We'll keep it going. I'm going to spend my three EP. It's going to take my EP from nine to six, and I'm going to pick up four discarded cards that were in my hands. All right. Okay. Are uh, you ready? Yes. All right. It's not ready all the way, but okay. I'll get you. Not, not ready so now we are in uh, this action phase where we're picking one of our cards here. Okay. All right. So ready, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going right to. Way. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do. Do this here. That 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 sounds good. All right. One, two, two three. three. All right. Okay. So we're going to check speeds here. I have a speed of one and got her magnify back, which is awesome. She's I have speed a speed of, of ten. Two. Speed of two. So we're going to go for me first here. Pandora. This one's hilarious and crazy where it just puts a random spell. Into play awesome. for me. It's just one of the random signature spells is now replaced with this one. It is, in this case, Scourge. Uh, it's going to be a slow card, so the actual effect won't happen until later when it comes back around here. And it's going to cost me two EP, and it's going to put a poison on one of you guys. So well, actually, you here, Max. I'm so sorry what, what does the poison do? It's going to be every turn you're going to lose some health until you gain health. Okay. So if you don't have a way to use your earth or what have you, well, you're going to keep poisoning and... I think I'll be okay, though, because the card that I played, which would happen next, okay. is uh, this Evert now. So this turn, any card that does damage or reduces HP will instead increase HP by the same amount. So you would so be it giving me health. Literally, though. it would be is cursing you. Is it each you turn? Mine because it, it was be. poison, and because he played that this They'll round, still stick. It'll stick. It'll on stick, you. and you'll get the plus exactly. health for each yeah, one. There's but actually a rata about that. And in then any card that makes you gain HP will then deduct it instead. So Anne, what are you doing with yours? You're a terrible human being. <laughs> so just think about that when you're replacing a card with Magnify. Maybe don't, so like zap, don't, play your Earth maybe don't zap me with Lightning either, because yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. just heal me for a bunch. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I screwed everything is hilarious, up. Yeah. especially when you're fighting monsters. We'll so that in a second. I'm going to play win then, so that the target takes one damage and randomly deactivates three cards. OK, so you would heal one then, Walter, and then deactivate three exactly, cards. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so we're going to we'll call the versus here, so yeah. we can we can wrap up. We'll get rid of these items. We're going to ditch our signature spells because we have to earn these. OK. The Just next the layer of the game that we would use in versus but is most important for the uh, story mode here is that we're each going to get a character class. Okay. There are a bunch of classes in the game. I'm going to assign them based on your personalities. <laughs> uh, and you're the Witchborn. Sorry. Thanks. <laughs> and that nah, you're forgotten. Oh, okay. <laughs> They'll forget. No, they're badass. I'm going to be this little vampire because that just checks out. There we go. We got nine. And so they give us different starting amounts of health and energy. 
different, uh, different EP. How so am I tracking the EP for this class? So the EP is still here. Okay. This is going to track your experience, actually. So well, I give you I give you a health tracker. I'm yes. a jerk. I meant to give you guys these level trackers. <laughs> that, they go the that opposite makes direction. That makes more sense for you guys. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, makes go, more sense. So those are track your levels. As we beat monsters and do story stuff, we're going to gain more levels, and that's how we're going to get those awesome you signature spells. Okay. Stuff there. Exactly. Okay, Boom. Perfect. Um, so they're going to need different amounts of starting health and energy, and they also give you a special ability on the back side of that card. Back side of this card here. And oh. they all do different crazy stuff, so and they right happen now. in different phases. And I'll explain what phase you do it, but for years, Matt, I think you kind of have the most passive one. Okay, so true grid. At any time, you may spend EP to reduce damage taken before a card's other uh, effects... Uh, Effects, exactly. Uh, effects. Effect. Oh, yeah, duh. Yeah. Are uh, applied. Damage reduction is equal to the amount of EP spent. Okay, cool. Whereas Anne actually got my favorite guy there, uh, the Witchborn, where as a standoff action, she can spend some EP to soup up a spell. Ooh. Yeah. And oh, I nice. love it. It's really fun, especially when speed really matters in some of the fights with monsters. It gets it gets really good. Okay. So Very we're not going to cool. worry about these uh, targeting cards because we're on the same team now. Okay. We are Grimslingers out on an Aaron from Icarus the Iron Witch. Okay. And Icarus, we're back at our, our watering hole, the Valley Haven Bar. This first player marker now becomes our little group marker. Okay. This is where we like to hang out, the Valley Haven Bar. This is when we would then open the story booklet. And I'll just give, you want to just fan a couple pages of some of the graphic yeah, design sure. on that. The nice, some of the see-through stuff there. Stuff, yeah, some see-through stuff there. So we're going to have, I it's going to give us some story, and then it gives us some certain objectives and things we need to do within the world. Our primary objective is that Icarus hates the Witch King. The self-proclaimed Witch King. Okay. However, the Witch King lives in the void, and we've got to summon him. We don't know how to summon him. So we got to go find his cultists, beat them up, and learn how to summon the Witch King so we can yeah, kick his ass. That makes sense. This story is going to take a lot of wacky twists and turns. It gets really goofy. There's a bunch of dark humor in the story. And it ends up being that the Witch King's not so bad after all. But oh, we'll deal with that when we get there. He's a nice there. guy. For now, let's just do, let's do one round of fighting a monster. So as we explore, there are going to be event cards that we flip up. One of the things I love about the event cards is that they have us use our elements thematically outside of combat. So, if, for example, one of them is... Oh no, a sandstorm. What do you want to do? Do you want to push it away with your wind spell? Do you want to build a barrier with your earth spell? Or do you want to take a bunch of damage because you're getting smacked by sand? Oh, I, I think I want to push it away with my wind spell. Okay, so you would have to discard your wind. Uh, and you won't have wind in your hand at the start of a next fight. Gotcha. Since this is a co-op part of the game, is it everybody's going to discard that same spell? For that particular instance, we all get to make our own choices. Okay. For that one, some of them we all have to discard our cards and we all have to do different things. Okay. okay. Very cool. Um, so... There are these little event nodes. There are these little specific story mode, uh, nodes where we go to a very specific page in the book. But let's worry about these attack nodes where we're going to fight these different guys. It's okay. a random draw, but I'm going to have us fight the Jackalope. Aw, he's so Not cute. all monsters are mean. I love but him. We actually find out that we need his horns as part of the ritual ingredients for oh. summoning. So it's a little dark here. Poor Jackalope. But fighting the Jackalope, he's going to have a variable amount of health and uh, energy, depending on us. There's three of us, so he's going to have 12 health and 13 energy. Got these little trackers on him here. So he's going to track just like we oh, track our DF. He's got his own bits here. He's got his own three cards, and he's got three generic skills that all creatures share. Okay. We're going to shell these out, but he's going to give us some clues. Well, as students of the game, we might know that certain uh, things are more likely to be in generic cards or in jackalope cards or what have you. But he's not just any regular jackalope, because every time you fight a, a creature, they're going to have a creature modifier. In this oh. case, he happens to be... An undead jackalope. An undead jackalope. <laughs> Amazing. Meaning the last <laughs> hit on this guy has to be with fire, or he's going to come back to life. That's oh, just something that okay. we now have to plan around. And there's a bunch of different modifiers. He could be giant, he could be fast, he could be strong, what have you. So, so in this case, he's undead. So we, as little low-level Grimslingers, don't have any special spells yet. We only have our elements to work with. Okay. So we're all going to pick one of these elements. I'm going to have this guy hot. I'm going to hit him with lightning. I hate jackalopes, especially the undead kind. And I want to save my fire to get the killing blow on him. So I'm coming in with lightning. You know, I, I, th oh, that's th I feel like that's a good idea to try and do as much damage as possible. Let's, just, let's see if we can so just get this Let's sucker. electrocute this. How much? You know, He's like got two 12 damage, health. Two damage, two, Actually, 13 health, excuse me, three. and 12 energy. Yeah. One thing, another element to this is that you can defeat a monster by bringing either their health or energy to zero. Right now, we don't have enough tools to mess with their energy, but later, as we get more items and spells, we might start really going after that avenue. Anywho, we all played Lightning, and now the Jackalope's going to play his card. 
if you want to show one of these up. Sure thing. So. Just like uh, our spells, they've got the name, a little piece of flavor, that effect is in the middle, but then most importantly, it's got a speed and a target at the bottom. All right. Has a speed of eight, and it's faster than our spells, which are nines. So his is going to happen first. In all this right. case, we all take four damage. Four oh. freaking damage, but Phil may pay two EP to evade and take no damage, but must also discard the card that they played this turn. Oh, no. no I'm, I'm saying I'm in. Uh, yeah, let's take, let's take Wait, did we reset to nine for the health? Uh, you reset, actually, to your uh, Witchborn gives you seven ah, health and okay. a bunch of nine. You have nine EP, EP. so okay. you have plenty. That's fine. Um, so then I I'm will gonna, take the hit. I'm going to take the hit. So that yeah. we can so we can smack this fool. Yeah, let's do that. We okay. hit him for nine. He goes down to four. So he's almost dead. He's almost uh, dead. I'm pretty we sure really next turn we'll be able to take him fast. Uh, but he did gain some EP. What have you? Doesn't matter. That's These fine. cards are now discarded. So we would keep yeah. doing that until eventually we we kill this giant. Exactly. We get some experience for beating him. We're gonna get some random loot for all of us, and then we're gonna get one ritual item, which is a special thing that Jackalope gives us that we'll need to progress the story and things like that. Fantastic. Uh, this game takes a lot of wacky turns, and it really brings in a lot of dark humor. It doesn't take itself too seriously. We just bought a Jackalope, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. But Not at the same Jackalope, time, yeah. it also brings in some really heart wrenching, sad moments. The Stephen Gibson, who I am. A huge fanboy of did all of the writing, illustration, graphic design, game design for this game. We just did some of the dev work here at Greenbrier. Um, and he put his heart and soul into this world. And so you really feel that every step of the way. And it's it's really an amazing experience. So first and foremost, where can our viewers go to find Grimslingers? Grimslingers is in all hobby shops. Well, not all hobby shops, but it should be you know, <laughs> should nationwide be in, in hobby, hobby stores. You can find it on Amazon. You can find it pretty much anywhere games are sold. You can find it on greenbriergames.com, which is also where you'll find the expansion. It's one of the only places you can get the expansion right now. There's an awesome, it's called the Northern Territory. It brings in so many more RPG elements, a whole robust character system. One of the things that you guys love about Hara is that it's got the unique resource systems. Yep. I got to put that into the Northern Territory love for Game Slayers. So they all awesome. play very differently, and it's, it's tons of fun. Fantastic. Walter, thank you so much for joining us You guys today. are the best. I really appreciate really being here. really do appreciate it. And thank you all for watching at home. We're going to take a brief intermission right now, but we'll be back in just a few moments with more board game coverage here from PAX Unplugged 2018. Signing off as usual, I'm Matt. I'm Ann. Goodbye, Walter. everyone. Thanks, Goodbye. guys.